chemical and chemical and control engineering and electrical engineering at B R Ambedkar National Institute of Technology, Jalandhar, India. It is an institute of national importance and presently working as an associate professor in the institute. He had completed his master's and PhD at NIT Jalandhar with specialization on artificial intelligence in robotics and have 22 years of teaching and research experience. He has been awarded as a best teacher award in 2019 by director come chairman Senate for pioneer contribution in teaching and research. More than 20 intellectual property rights in the form of patents, copyrights and industrial designs are in his credit and many more are in pipeline. He is an inventor of an earthquake alarm, leg exerciser machine and an intelligent induction hardening machine. He has commercialized three inventions and is regularly supporting manufacturing industry in absorbing new technologies to make them ready for next industri industrial revolution. He has published more than 45 research papers in journals and conferences of good repute. He is a member of various technical societies and renowned organizers and organizations at international and national level. He has successfully completed many R&D projects, including shared autonomy in mobile robots in collaboration with Korea University. He is also the invited member of Technical Committee of Indian Research Organization, ISRO, for Space Robotics Mission Gagan Yan. Sir, we are thankful to you for accepting our request to deliver a talk for our participants. We have a large number of participants from engineering colleges and students. We have state government officers, legal methodology officers, and the industries who are actually working in different different fields, actually, especially in weighing and measuring or other fields. So, sir, it will be a very good exercise, very good knowledge sharing session to understand what actually at which position we are and what are the next step which we have to take in, in this field. We have with us our former Honorable Director Saab, Shri Biyantikshi Saab, Director Legal Metallurgy. Sir, I would like to request you to kindly uh, speak two words so that we can start the session. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Astoji. Thank you, Dr. Nakla Saab. And a uh, lot of things has been spoken about you. And the sensor calibration is very much interesting in uh, legal metrology because a lot of the instruments are working on that very basis. So it is very interesting. And the mobile robot navigation. That is also a very good thing because in future the time dissemination is coming. So, so there the robot uh, navigation and the time dissemination may be clubbed and uh, accuracies may be observed in the different fields uh, of the industries and uh, various um, institutions and uh, service providers so this is a very good topic so i hope that today seminar will be very successful to the all the participants and i wish for the success of this very seminar thank you astoji thank you professor namdev thank you thank you very much sir thank you for your kind words now i would like to request professor nagla to kindly and thailand enlighten us with his knowledge, experience, and share the what next steps. Please, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Director, sir, uh, Dr. Ashutosh, sir, and dear participants, uh, very good morning to all of you. So uh, today, uh, as it is already told that we are going to discuss about the sensor calibration and uh, mobile robot navigation is an important emerging area of research right now. So, as you know that the uh, lot many works are going in the field of uh, robotics as the robotics is going to be an important segment of everybody's life in near future. Even the autonomous vehicles are there. It is expected to be launched very soon, autonomous uh, vehicles. And in many countries like the Google car and many other autonomous vehicles are already there. In all these vehicles, there is a role of meteorology. There is a role of the measurement. There is a role of the precision measurement by using the various sensors. Since the robots are 
very delicate, you know, the going to be a delicate machines in near future in order to avoid the accidents, in order to avoid the collision, the role of the sensor is very important right now. And particularly in the field of uh, the sensor, the calibration of the sensor, the registration of the sensor, interfacing of the sensor with the computer is also an emerging area and very important to consider whenever you are thinking about the mobile robot navigations. So the uh, uh, the outline of my uh, you know the lecture is uh, about the first part is related to the introduction about the robotics, and we will consider the recent trends in robotics how the modern robots are there what is the robot and what is not robot some part of the history of the robot and various application and uh, the classification of the robot so we will also having uh, some look upon the indigenously developed robot in the lab and uh, we will be having a detailed discussion on mobile robot navigation and the calibration of the the laser range finder sensor and at the end of the presentation there will be a discussion the participants may also ask the questions and discuss anything uh, during the session also. So before going to start, we will, uh, I would like to uh, share that, uh, what is robot and what is not a robot. So uh, as you know that the world robot is a Czechoslovakian world. So it was first time used in 1923 in one of the play uh, written by Karl Kepik. So name of the play was the Rosen's Universal Robot. So there are large uh, volume of the definitions are there behind the robot. But according to the, the Robotic Institute of America, the, uh, the robot is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator designed to move the material, parts, tools, or specialized devices through the variable programmed motion for the performance of variety of the tasks. So there are, uh, in this definition, it is uh, shown that the uh, robot, modern robot is a reprogrammable in nature. It is a multifunctional means it can be used uh, for the different applications and uh, uh, the uh, it can move to, uh, use to move the specialized devices through the variable program motions for the performance of variety of the tasks. So if you look the recent trends in the field of uh, the robot, uh, as per the report, Robotics 2023, so uh, 2022, there was around 5,17,385 new industrial robots were installed uh, in the factories around the world. And it is a big volume of the industrial robots. So there is around uh, uh, 3.5 million uh, approximate robots are operationing throughout the world right now. And uh, Asia remains the world's largest market for the industrial robot. And around 74% of all the new robot installs are only in Asia, like in China, Japan, Korea, and India, and the other major stakeholders. So there is a boom of the robots in all over the industry throughout the world. And uh, in particularly the industrial robots were already uh, there in the industry, but right now the service robots are also on very much demand. The service robots on demand are the cleaning robot, the, the uh, service providing robot like automated guided vehicles in the, uh, in the you know, uh, service robots in the, uh, in the field of uh, the uh, warehouse to transfer the materials as well as many other robots like uh, the robots used in the, in the household applications or in the hospital applications. So the, uh, as per the report that the India enters in right now into the, uh, into, into the largest you know, the stakeholder of the robots, India is the world, one of the world's fastest growing industrial uh, economies and uh, as per the International Federation of the Robotics, so it is right now the within it is the India is within the within the five years the operational stock of the industrial robot in India has more than doubled, and uh, today the India is world's fifth largest economy measured by the manufacturing output. So as you know that according to the World Bank statistic, India's manufacturing value added in 2021 was US dollar around 443.9 
billion, which is 21.6% increase from 2020. So in the first, uh, in the last few years, so the density of the robot, industrial robot has been increased drastically. Today, the country's GDP is, uh, is about uh, 3 trillion, uh, trillion uh, which has been, you know, the uh, much more as compared as going to be at par with the other, you know, the developed country of the Europe as well as the other countries. So this is the the just the forecast of the robot technology. You can see that in this graph that in around 2030, so there will be a business of uh, around 225, uh, you know, the U billion US dollar, which is uh, you know the the fast increase in the in the growth of uh, the business in the field of the robot. And uh, in future, the robots are going to be the very necessary component of the human life in uh, different domains, like in the space exploration, underwater exploration, domestic, as well as the agriculture applications. You might have seen that in the agriculture applications right now, the robots are used for the spray of the pesticide, the spray of uh, the minerals, spray of the seeds, and uh, firefighting equipments are also right now uh, connected to the to the flying robot for the uh, future also if you look on the uh, history of the robot the robot is not the new uh, world so the history of the robot is showing that uh, even in the 18th century 17th century some of the mechanical devices were there so in uh, uh, then there is a revolution of the the machines with the help of the motors in around 1920 uh, to 1954 some of the uh, preliminary robots were developed and uh, uh, then uh, the first robot was there in around 1954 and right now uh, up to the 2006 and 8 the, the due to the availability of the sensor due to the availability of the the computers and the other things right now the uh, the robots are very much advanced and uh, they are there in the world market. So in uh, 2023, the robots are quite advanced due to the availability of the artificial intelligence and uh, the availability of the smart sensors. So right now, the much of the sensors used in the robots are the smart sensor. So the modern smart sensors are having their uh, self capabilities of uh, the you know the the calibration uh, the some of the energization of the 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 sensor as well as the uh, self diagnostic type of the sensors as well as the processors are there in the modern robots so the modern robots are quite fast uh, quite intelligent they are very much uh, you know the simple to operate and they are freely available uh, available in the market right now even the the kids can operate the robots in the modern environment. So in the modern era, the many of the robots are used as a toy robot for the entertainment purposes. And uh, much of the robots are also used in, uh, uh, in the other domains like the hospitals. So uh, if you see the small classification of the robot, so according to the Japanese uh, environment, the definition of the robot is different. They said the robots can be classified into the five or six different classes like the manual handling devices, fixed sequence robot, variable sequence robot, playback robot, numerical controlled robots or the intelligent robots extra. So as for the France, the, they have classified the robots as a uh, type A robot, type B, type C and type D type of uh, the robots. So, the general perception in the mind of the, the human is that as per the, uh, the perception generated by the Hollywood as well as the Hollywood imagination, they said the, uh, the robot is just like the human structure. It has the human face, eyes, uh, limbs, as well as the, the human-like structure may be moving like shown in the, in the robot mover, movie of the, uh, the Rajni Khan. So in that case, the, the robot is exactly shown in the form of the human structure moving very fast. But in actual sense, the 
uh, industrial manipulator may be a single hand, it may be a fingers combination. It may be the, the robot may be the, uh, you know, the, the mobile robot fitted with the manipulator over the, the robot. So the robots can further be classified into the different categories like the autonomous robot, semi-autonomous robot, teleoperated robot, or the telepresence robot. And uh, the robot may be the, the wireless robot or the other type of the robot where in the case of the telepresence robot, the uh, you know the the video of the human is also coming. So the robots can be fire, further classified on the basis of the locomotion on the in the form of uh, the robots may be the the stationary robot. It may be uh, a wheeled robot. May be the two wheeled, three wheeled, four wheeled, and multi wheeled robot. The robot may be a uh, legged robot. It may be the the six leg robot, two leg robot, and so on. The further classification of the modern robot is the is the micro robots, nano robots, soft robots, cloud robots, snake robots, and so on. So, as per the applications, uh, several classifications are there. All robots are consisting of the different sensors, like the perception generation sensors, like the internal, you know, the motion of the sensor and uh, all these kinds of the sensors play a very important role in the autonomous function of the, the robot. So in addition to that, the processor is also having its own role in the field of the, the, the robot here. So the classification of the robots can be further classified like the space robot, military robot, medical robot, industrial robot, underwater robot, and so on. So several classifications are there. So uh, before considering the role of uh, the sensor, the role of the processor in the manufacturing of the robot, we need to consider the advantages as well as the disadvantages of the, the robot. So if you consider the industrial robot, the advantages are the different. If you consider the service robot for the home uh, environment, the applications, the advantages may be the different. So the robot increase the product quality. As you know that the the car sprayed over by the robot is having a good quality of the spray painting over the car as compared to the human because the deposition of a paint over the surface of a car is very gradual, very fine. It also increases the robots also increase the efficiency because the robots are continuously working without a fatigue. They also increase the safety. They also reduce the cost of the manufacturing because the scrap is also reduced and labor cost is also reduced by the application of the robot. So the robot also reduce the manufacturing lead time. They also increase the, the productivity and the, the robots have the capabilities beyond the humans. If you consider an application of uh, the drone robot, so the drone robots are having fitted with the camera as a vision uh, tool. So the range of the vision sensor is several kilometers as compared to the humans. The capability of the robot is much higher. Some of the medical robots can see behind the tissues, whereas the, ro the doctor, physically it is difficult for the doctor to see behind the tissue, the structure of the bone. But with the help of the X-ray machines, with the help of the ultrasound probe fitted in the robot, the robot can estimate the inside tissue structure. Uh, these capabilities are much more as compared to the, to the human. So the robots can lift much more weight as compared to the, to the human is also the, the capabilities of the, 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 you know, the robot. So in addition to that, the, the robots can uh, uh, work in a very harsh environment. It may be hot, it may be the, the cold environment also. So uh, the robots can efficiently uh, work in the other planets also, where even the, if the oxygen is not there, the, the robot is quite advantageous at, at that place. The one of the big, you know, the importance of the robot is that the multitasking can be done with the help of a robot. There is a no uh, social problem with the robot. So the robots can work anywhere uh, around the world. So in addition to that, there are many more advantages are there which are consistent with the robot. So in addition, 
similarly some of uh, where the advantages are there the disadvantages are always there so the modern robots are uh, if we compare the modern robot with the humans they have the lack of the capabilities in the case of the emergency so the humans can take the decisions in the case of the emergency but the robots are reprogrammable in the nature so it is not necessary that in all emergency conditions the robots are taking their own decision inappropriate and wrong responses is very serious problem in the robots so you know that the the perception of the robots the sensation of the robot of the environment is depending on the range sensor such as a sonar sensor such as a vision sensor such as uh, the infrared type of sensor so you know that all sensors are having the, their own uh, limitations okay so they have uh, the la loss of the power is also uh, one of uh, the limitation of the the, the robot so uh, the another uh, limitation is that the it may cause the damage to the to the humans as well as the other uh, you know the persons which is working uh, around the the robot so the uh, the some of uh, the capabilities like the the degree of freedom is also the limited in the case of the robot so the robots are uh, costly right now due to the uh, the high in initial cost as well of the component and the installation of the robot is also not much simple one thing is that the since the uh, robots are machines so uh, you know the training is always re required to the robots and there is a need for the programming of the robot uh, is the one of the limitation of the robot okay so okay so as per the uh, prediction of the bill gate the famous person is that in near future every house may have minimum one robot so these robot in house may be making the laundry may be cleaning the carpet may be the lawn mower may be the surveillance robot so many of the robots will be there in future around the houses so this is the prediction so that means there is a large demand of the, the robot is there in the near future so if you see the classification of the robot given by the international federation of the public so they said the robots can be classified as a service robot as well as the industrial robot so the environment of the industrial robot is already already you know the well advanced you know the area where the right now uh, for the car manufacturing tractor manufacturing garment manufacturing the robots are performing the welding operation pick and place operation even the assembly operation in the motherboard of the computers so the service robots are the different one which are classified as a servicing humans if the robot like the surgery robot is performing surgery is uh, in the category of a robot servicing human uh, then the robot may be the servicing equipment robot and the other service robot such as the courier robot also so this is uh, the example of uh, the various kind of the service robot and on the right side the various kind of the industrial robot the service robots are uh, a bit advanced as compared to the, the industrial robot in the sense that the decision making power the autonomous power of the service robot is considered as higher as compared to the industrial robot because the industrial robots are working on a repetitive tasks so so repeatedly uh, the industrial robots are uh, performing the operations but the service robot is generally working the dynamic environment where the other robots as well as the you know the, the humans may be moving around so in that case there is a uh, much more advanced features are there in the case of the service robot as compared to the industrial robots so The, these are the some of uh, the examples of the service robots like uh, the uh, service robot is uh, used in the nuclear power plant in the case of uh, the extreme emergency the robots can perform some of the function there is a pool cleaning robots are there the floor cleaning robots are already there in the houses then uh, the <clears throat> demand of the 
service robot assisting the human is are always there so right now in uh, in a domestic environment in the hotels the robots are providing services to carry the refreshment from kitchen to sitting room from uh, they may be serving the food at the dining area also so in many of the restaurants the the robots may be there and all these robots are having the sensors and uh, the processors which are on the back of the decision making capabilities of the the robot so this is the advanced uh, feature of the surgical robot where the surgery can be performed right now with the help of the the robots so you have already know the advantages of the surgical robot as compared to the human made surgery so the surgery made by the the robot is quite uh, you know the the advanced and minimum invasive uh, probe is required and uh, the precision you know the cutting and placing of the organ can be done with the help of the surgical robot so some of the robots may be the very large size of the robots right now the robotic manipulators are used to clean the external part of the rail coaches external part of the aircrafts also and other service robots like the courier service robots as well as the robots which are providing services to the to the humans are also uh, used in the in the domestic environment on the lower side the this one is a service robot which we have developed in our laboratory during the corona period so this uh, service robot was designed to carry the medicine to the corona patients in the corona ward so we use that robot into the uh, civil hospital and where the uh, the robot was providing food to the patients and uh, on the trial basis it was installed in to the in the hospital in uh, private hospital also some of the services were also provided by that robot so the uh, you know the application of the robot you already know that in the space application like the rover is already there on the mars and chandran 3 is india is expecting to be launched very soon and this is the canada arm which is fitted on the international space station for the last several years the canada arm is performing very good function so it is assisting the astronauts to clean the uh, solar panels to maintain the batteries outside the international space station and inside the international space station also there is some kind of the robots are also there right now some of the robots are the uh, you know like a simo robot is used as an entertainment robot and uh, the world market is also focused on the entertainment robot in near future because they are going to be integral part of the elder people's small kids also to maintain the happiness or maintain the good environment in the house with the help of the so due to the uh, you know the revolution that is under the four point revolution the robots are right now there in the industry which where they are connected with the computer the machines are also connected with the robot so machines as well as the computer jointly controlling the industrial environment in the industry 4.0 revolution so you know that the uh, revolution one two three was already there the first revolution in industry was just to make the steam engine second was to add the machineries and right now the fourth uh, understill revolution the present innovation is the uh, is the computer and the artificial intelligence and the smart automation environment is there industry 4.0 there is a uh, big role of uh, the internet as well as the internet of things and uh, if the internet of things are connected with the with the robotics application then it is known as the iort it is also termed as internet of the robotic things there are many type of the iort is there if they are uh, they are connected with the mobile thing it is termed as the internet of mobile things it may be the autonomous internet of things then it may be autonomous system of things internet of autonomous things and so on so the modern robots are connected to the to the cloud services also so in our uh, application in our laboratory uh, we have our uh, multi sensor data fusion 
which has been taken at the cloud uh, position with the help of the IORT. So in our uh, workstation, we uh, fuse the, the recursive information of the mapping, which is a part of the navigation of the robot. And we fuse that information uh, with the previous information into the cloud. So the cloud is a uh, nothing but it is a uh, server which is available at some centrally location. So much of the robots can be connected to that server. And some of the operations just, just like the uh, mathematical operation, the logical operations can be done uh, at the level of the, uh, the, the cloud. And uh, we did that and it has shown very good results. So the uh, the next is the artificial intelligence in the field of the, the robots. So the artificial intelligence is right now playing a crucial role in the perception, in the decision mapping, uh, such as the in the form of the deep learning, then the predictive analysis, then uh, the translation of the natural language into the machine language, then the speech to text, text to speech, then uh, there may be the planning and scheduling, optimization, image recognition, and so on, uh, right now is the part of the artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligences, you know that they may be the deep learning, it may be a neural network, it may be the algorithm execution at the different level for the different applications. So <clears throat> modern, you know, the, the robots are connected with a sensor where the self calibration of the sensor can also be done by the application of the artificial intelligence to get the robots. So these are the uh, the different kind of the robots are there, like the flying robot, swimming robot, leg robot, field robot. And uh, they are used in defense, industry, security, medical, transport, commercial, and the consumer type, type of the applications. So there is a role of the meteorology in the field of uh, the robotics, like the calibration of the sensor, the accuracy and uh, perception in the sensor, the fusion of the information of uh, the sensor and to present that uh, information uh, in the form of the measurement. So the sensors may be like the laser sensor, vision sensor, play a fundamental role for perception or the measurement of the obstacle. In the diagram given below is the mobile robot having, having the wheels fitted along. And the red color is the chassis of the robot, and uh, the upper side is connected with the two different sensors. So the bottom side, the golden color is the vision sensor. It is a stereo vision camera. Upper side is a laser range finder, and in between the upper platform and the laser, there is a PTU pan tilt unit. The function of the pan tilt unit is to uh, provide the pan and the tilt motion to the sensor which is fitted on the top surface of the, the mobile robot. So the perception generated by the sensor in the case of the, the laser sensor may be a 2D plan, it may be a 3D point cloud, and uh, in the vision sensor, it may be a 3D point cloud. And uh, the robot is taking the information uh, from the laser sensor and the vision sensor and uh, uh, the measure the distance of the object. And uh, then the, uh, function of the the robot is to take decision to reach the destination. So that decision is uh, very much uh, based upon the sensor information, which is taken by the different kind of the sensor. So before going to uh, discuss about the actual, uh, you know, the sensor and its application, we need to understand the robot characteristics. So a particular robot may having a particular payload capacities. It have a as a reach and a maximum distance that robot can reach and uh, the precision then um, in addition to that the repeatability like uh, you know the characteristics are there so various components of the robots are there like uh, the manipulator of the robot the uh, the manipulator is the physical structure of the robot which is uh, combination of various uh, mechanical links and the joints. These links may be the flexible links. These joints may be the different kind of joints. Rover is the structural configuration of the built uh, part of the robot. Then the end factor are the end part of the robot, which are the 
like the two finger and factor like the welding torch like spray painting and uh, the actuators are also a part of the robot the actuators are providing motion to the to the to the uh, robot they may be the hydraulic actuator may be the electrical actuator the sensor may be the different kind the controller processor and the software are the necessary component of the, the robot so these are the different kind of the, the robots which we have built in our laboratory like in 2000 we developed a domestic robot when we developed a robotic arm then uh, we developed a, a robotic arm for fertilizer plants then uh, we developed the uh, the walking robot then uh, uh, right now we developed the uh, the robot for cleaning the external part of the rail coaches these are the some of the the robot which we developed in early stage so this one is the domestic robot this is the plc based robot this is pick and place robot cleaning robot and uh, nut bolting tightening of robot and uh, underwater robot we developed the this robot is the water sprinkler robot which we developed so the function of this robot is to sprinkle the water over the grass and uh, the robot is a reprogrammable so you can program that robot and go back to your uh, job and uh, before that the robot will automatically take the trajectory and spray the water over the desired surface so this can be a kind of uh, agriculture robot so then uh, there is a uh, the r and d project given by the ministry of the railway to develop a robot to clean the external part of the rail coach so these are the components and the control strategy of that robot and this is the manufacturing of the uh, the the robot and final structure of the robot where the nozzle is throwing the water over the desired surface the nozzle can be moved in a uh, three dimensional structure throwing the water over the surface now come to the autonomous mobile robot or introduction to the robot so uh, i have already explained that uh, the robots are the machine controlled with the help of the software and with the use of the sensors and the other technologies to identify its surrounding and to move around in the environment a system with the with the following you know the characteristics i like the mobility is the one of the function of the autonomous mobile robot so the uh, mobility is concerned with the movement of the robot into the different environment that environment may be the surface which may be a smooth surface the surface may be a rough surface it may be an inclined surface it may be a muddy it may be the wet surface or it may be the dry surface certain levels of the autonomy is also uh, is there in the case of the mobile robot the robot may be the fully autonomous robot it may be the the semi autonomous robot or uh, the perception ability is also they are in the case of the robot so i already explained that the robots are taking decision and that decision is uh, based upon the perception the robot is perceiving the information of the environment and giving that information to the perceptor where the robot is taking decision to move around so the mobile robot may be the the autonomous semi autonomous or the other type of the robot like the tele operator robots in the case of uh, the autonomous mobile robot and intelligent machine that can perform various desired tasks in a structure or unstructured environment via acquisition of spatial information from the sensor with no continuous human guidance so the they are self you know the taking decisions so if you consider the case of the the robot which is working there in the mars so the it has the dual you know the control one is that that robot can be controlled from the ground station but the robot is also having its own uh, you know the function with which the autonomous decision the robot can be taken so that decisions are taken by looking the surrounding by looking the obstacles and by planning to reach the destination part so this is the uh, some of the key questions are there with the autonomous robot so in the case of autonomous robot the question is where am i so the robot is a machine so how the the machine will come to know that where that machine is so that can be done by using a mapping and a localization 
So the mapping is uh, the process of acquiring the map of the surrounding of the robot and localization means, means where am I means what is the position of the robot in that environment and how do I get there means how to get path planning and to reach the destination and where I am going means the navigation. So we are concerned in this lecture is with the navigation where the mapping and localization and path planning is also part of the navigation. So the navigation is an important segment where the robot is taking decision going to the destination and so on. So they have the, the there are uh, many application of the navigations are there in the space exploration in the search and rescue operation in agriculture military and surveillance and underwater robot so the robot navigation means the uh, robot's ability to define determine its own position in its frame or a reference frame and then to plan the path toward the goal this thing i have already uh, given to you so the mapping is the part of the navigation so the uh, mapping is a process of generation of a model of a robot's environment based on the sensory information. So that, that sensory information is mapping the environment. So that map may be of a different kind. It may be of the two dimensional 2D map or it may be a 3D map. In the case of 2D map, it can be classified as a metric map, which can be classified as a geometric map or a grid map or a topological map or a hybrid map if you consider the map of a city by using a google map so it may be called as a two dimensional map or a 2d map so it is giving you the geometric information about the various uh, you know the roads various streets various uh, uh, you know the street signals are also there and the topological map is also giving you the landmark if you consider the case of a 3D mapping, it is a bit different from the 2D. In the case of the 3D, the three-dimensional information of the environment is there, which may be in the form of a point cloud. It may be in the form of a multi-level surface, or it may be a 3D voxel grid and so on. So the key issues are there with the internal representation since the, the robot is a machine. So you need to uh, take the information with the sensor, then you need to uh, to store that information into the processor, into the memory also. So in that case, the uh, you know the it is known as the internal representation. So that representation may be in the form of a grid, where the grid information may be in the form of uh, the probability function from zero to one. The grid information of a particular cell may be related to the intensity of uh, the information which may be coming from the vision sensor. Then the purpose of a mapping and the mapping efficiencies are also the issue. Since the, uh, the generation of a map is a time consuming process in the case of a mobile robot. So the mapping efficiency is a very important segment and an emerging area in the case of the mobile robot navigation. So and these are the figures in the right side or a left side that how the point cloud is represented in the 3D form and how the, uh, you know, the multi-level surface representation is there and how the elevated maps are generated. And on the left side, how the geometric map and the grid maps are generated. So this is the example of the, the comparison of the 2D and the 3D mapping. Uh, in the case of the 2D, the, the depth of the information can be estimated, but the height is difficult to estimate. But in the case of the 3D map on the right side, you can estimate the, the shape of the table, even the depth of the table can be measured by the 3D mapping. But the uh, full table, you will not be able to estimate in front of the board by using a 2D mapping technique. So the different sensors which play important role in the case of the navigation may be the radar, it may be a sonar, it may be a monocolor camera, it may be a stereo vision camera also. So these, uh, you know, the, the 2D, 3D LiDAR as well as monocolor camera 
and stereo vision cameras are very commonly used in the modern autonomous mobile robot to navigate. So uh, I have already told you that all sensors are having their own limitations. The vision sensor is having the limitation that sometimes the shadow of the image is also considered as an image, the element in the case of a vision sensor. The laser sensor sometimes the laser can be penetrated into the thin glasses if it is a perpendicular to glass is giving the wrong information. Sometimes the specular reflection is there in the case of the smart sensor is also a serious problem. In order to avoid such type of problem, there is a need of fusion of the sensor information, such as the fusion of a sonar sensor with a laser sensor, uh, vision sensor with laser sensor and so on. So this is known as a multi-sensor data fusion. So the, the noise in the sensor is also a serious problem. So in the purpose of the measurement, the noise of the sensor may be due to the different, you know, the parameters like the variation in the temperature, like the humidity, like the intensity of the outside light, like the effect of the gravity and so on, are affecting the output of the sensor is a serious problem. So in order to that, the, there is a need of uh, the fusion of the information. For fusion of the information, there is a need of more than one sensor. If you are using more than one sensor in the mobile robot, there is a need of the calibration. So calibration in the process is that the, in this diagram, you can see that the uh, vision sensor is a golden sensor, golden color sensor is placed on the surface of the, the mobile robot. Its origin is the different from the origin of the laser sensor. So the laser sensor is uh, placed on the top of the, the surface of the robot. There may be a distance between the laser sensor and the vision sensor. If we fetch the information of the environment, any point P in the environment, so the P point is seen by the laser sensor as well as the vision sensor also, but the, uh, you know, the, the energy store, that is the information stored into the computer, the internal representation will be having some errors because the position of the sensor, which is a vision is different from the position of the laser sensor. So that error is always causing a serious, you know, the problem in the mobile robot navigation. Sometimes this problem may get confused the decision of the robot. Sometimes the robot is taking trajectory in the wrong direction. So in order to avoid, there is a need of a calibration before fusing the information. So that is the calibration of the D sensor. So the calibration may be of a different kind. One is the intrinsic calibration. Another is the extrinsic calibration. Intrinsic calibration is known as the calibration of the internal parameter of the sensor. If you consider the case of a vision sensor, so the vision sensor is having the the lens inside and the lens is focusing the image over the uh, over the pattern of the the small small you know the uh, sensors so that sensor is uh, uh, is there in the behind of the uh, you know the the lens on another side another sensor is there because it is stereo vision so uh, both the sensors must be placed very much accurately uh, before the, the the lenses, but it is generally not practical possible to be a hundred percent accurate position of the the sensor part behind the lens in the, in the studio video camera. So due to that, there may be certain distortion. So that distortion can be removed by sensing that how much is the variation in the position of the uh, the the sensor part. So that is known can be removed by using a calibration. So this type of calibration is known as a intrinsic type of a calibration, which has to be done to the vision sensor also only. In the case of the, the laser sensor, the chances of the error in the outer side are the lower one. Intrinsic calibration may not be required, but the extrinsic calibration is required. Extrinsic calibration is with the calibration of the, uh, the motion of the, the uh, you know, the laser sensor in the, in the sixth degree of freedom, as well as the position of the video sensor is to be computed. So, uh, this is the methodology of uh, the mobile robot navigation and shown in the layer by layer diagram. 
where the layer is showing you the representation of the mobile robot environment, then uh, representation of the basic interaction of the sensor and the recognition. Then uh, uh, there is a sensor model and the modeling of the sensor is required. Then uh, the registration of the sensor is required. Then the fusion is required and many other steps are there with which the navigation is to be achieved. In this navigation method, there is a big role of the calibration of the, the sensor. The calibration is providing you the more and more accuracy in the system. And the calibration is providing you the, the uh, best decision in the case of the mobile robot. So this is one part of uh, the calibration is the full degree of a freedom calibration, where the this, this calibration is of a six degree. So before considering the calibration, I would like to show that how the pan tilt system is working here on the case of the mobile robot. On the left side, you can see the, the picture of the mobile robot. And over the mobile robot, there is a, the two sensors are placed. One is the vision sensor and upper side is the laser sensor. The laser sensor is actually fixed over the pan tilt unit. So the center part, this black part is a pan tilt unit. It has the two degree of freedom, two motions are there. If we are fixing the 2D laser sensor over the pan tilt unit, then we can generate the 3D point cloud. So the 3D point clouds are the cloud information of the environment where the each point is given you the giving you the X, Y, Z coordinate. And these X, Y coordinate are also, and also giving you the distance of the object and a distance of point P from the sensor. So in the case of the mobile robot application, when you are going to generate the 3D point cloud, there are chances of the errors are the always there. So that chair errors are due to the uh, manufacturing defects of the sensor due to the inertia of the sensor because the sensor is moving uh, in the form of a pan and a tilt moment. So as the sensor is stopping at the last end, there is a, a certain error that may be there. So that motion is uh, always there and it is causing the error. So this error uh, is required and calibration is required. So in this case, the, the, the front view of the pan tilt unit is shown in this uh, uh, figure and the right is shown in there. There are the two parameter that is uh, uh, alpha X uh, and alpha Y are the, uh, are the, you know, the notations which are a part of the calibration. They are known as a calibration parameter and they are uh, measured here. So here is the, uh, you know, the, the point P is represent here. They are the, uh, the rotation from the origin O to the L. So region O is the origin of uh, the pan tilt unit and the origin L is uh, the origin of the laser sensor. There is a difference between the origin of the laser sensor and the, the, the center of the pan tilt unit. This is physical distance. So that distance may be two, three centimeter in the case of the sensor. So the position of a point P in the three dimensional space can be computed by this equation where the the rotation motion of uh, the rotation about the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis is represented by the equation in the case of the panther unit. So this is uh, if we multiply the the x, y, z u to the quadrate, then this is the overall transformation from uh, the origin O to the L is uh, by this equation. And uh, there is a uh, three more parameters are that that is t x t y and t z. So Tx, Ty, Tz are the difference from the origin of the pan tilt to the difference of the region of the, the laser sensor. So if we consider that there are three parameters are there with the rotation and three with the, with the uh, displacement, then this is known as the, uh, the calibration parameter uh, which are required before making the 3D point cloud. So that means it has a six degree of freedom, uh, three rotary and three translationary components are required to be computed. So there are many methods are there with which the, these types of the parameters can be computed either physically or by using some mathematical notation. So we use here 
the mathematical notation and uh, we find out the uh, the calibration parameter by placing the uh, target in front of the sensor so that target was a 90 degree in front of the sensor and we measure the uh, the point cloud by the sensor and by using some of the mathematical notations by using a triangulation method and by using the homogeneous transformation matrix of the, the sensor we computed the uh, the parameters like the, the translation about the x-axis translation about the y-axis and the z-axis so this is the example how the the calibration is done here for the tx ty tz so the in this case the calibration board of white color is placed in front of the the sensor and uh, it is uh, perpendicularly placed to in front of the sensor and a uh, line of the the laser point cloud is gathered uh, got over the surface and then by using a triangulation method the uh, distance between the the sensor and the the calibration board is computed and that parameters are computed and uh, the simulation software has been developed and finally the the uh, you know the calibration parameters are computed the calibration parameters are analyzed by considering 19 different target positions out of which the 50 planes are considered for evaluating the alpha y alpha z and ty and tz whereas 40 remaining target estimations are about the tx and t alpha x so the ground truth for the uh, rotation and the translation calibration parameter is set by the notation vector alpha where it is represent that the there is the error of 0.2 degree in x axis 0.5 in y point minus 0.7 in z and translation is also computed which we fed to the to the software to get the 3d uh, you know the environment so this is the uh, the computer simulation where the calibration parameters are computed like uh, the alpha x alpha y is alpha z tx ty and tz and the standard deviation is also computed which is representation so this is the qualitative and the quantitative analysis of the the 3d mobile mapping so on the top side this is the environment of the laboratory and in that lab we fetch the environmental information by the sensor we perform the two experiment one experiment we performed without uh, calibration and another experiment uh, we conducted with uh, with the calibration so in the simulation so uh, we have added the parameter and the calibration is done and uh, in the case of the the visual you know the representation here that uh, the uh, we also compared the the one of the geos you know the work and uh, with our own proposed work we compare the result and in that result we you can see that on the left side there is a much distortions are there and uh, and in the lower side the the if we are not calibrating the camera uh, or the laser there is a large distortion and uh, that distortion leads to the confusion in the mobile robot navigation so that's why the calibration is an important segment in the mobile robot navigation so this is the obtaining of the improved 3d map result with the 3d laser measurement after the noise is reduced and the calibration is done and uh, after doing the calibration there is a you know the further uh, improvement of the navigation is that by fusion of the laser range finder with the stereo vision camera so in this diagram you can see that the laser range finder is fitted on the surface and the vision is on the bottom side so these are the uh, this is the actual environment where the uh, box is placed here and uh, this is the fused information uh, without calibration this is the fused information about the one of the author which is a lee's calibration this one is the an's calibration and this is the proposed calibration we did the three experiment and compare the result of the three different you know the authors and our results are uh, much more improved where we estimated that the fused information is much more better after calibration and without calibration there are the chances of the errors are there we also compared the uh, quantitative analysis and in that quantitative analysis uh, it is also found that the 
the error which is uh, represented here in the hash one environment or uh, our proposed uh, the uh, application. So this blue part is our proposed where the error is very much lower as compared to the uh, 3D measurement without calibration and uh, the single stereo vision camera and without calibration. So all the six, you know, the comparisons are made uh, in the quantity of the, the uh, 3D mapping. And it is uh, seen that the proposed uh, in the environment proposed methodology has much improved the, the perception in the case of the mobile robot by using the fusion of the information as well as the calibration of the information. So we did the experiment on different environment. This is the hash two environment is the different environment. And this is the third environment also where the qualitative and the quantitative analysis uh, has shown uh, much differences here. So the, uh, the noise can also be removed and uh, this is the third, uh, fourth environment and uh, uh, the, the results are shown where the, the proposed method has shown a minimum error in the case of uh, the, the, the system. So how the evaluation is done. So we had in this diagram, you can say the, the red color dotted is the window generated in front of the, the, the environment. So this window, the standard deviation of this window's pixels is compared with the standard uh, image or the calibrated image. And by comparing the standard deviation and the other parameters like the uh, uh, like the mean of that uh, the information, so the uh, you know the the results are quite quite modified. So in that case, the uh, the conclusion is that an improved calibration method for two D uh, laser range finder is presented for the estimation of all six degree of freedom calibration parameter and uh, three degree of freedom rotation, three degree of freedom translation parameters are found for the calibration and uh, especially along the rotational axis using a simple planner calibration board we have used. And unlike the conventional method, the proposed method is required no need of any additional hardware like uh, camera and the rolling and the bi-direction rotation mechanism is not required. So, the consideration for the calibration parameter alone for the rotation axis illustrated improved performance for the uh, proposed approach in updating the 3D point cloud as compared to the conventional approach. So as the, uh, the, uh, the distortion uh, along all the axes is removed by using uh, this type of a calibration because it is an important segment. So these are the journals which we referred for the search and these are the references. And uh, I'm again having some uh, uh, general uh, views over the, the, the calibration is that uh, we did the calibration on uh, the stereo vision camera and uh, it is the extrinsic calibration where the position of the vision sensor is different from the, the laser sensor. And we did the, the fusion of uh, the vision and the laser sensor. But uh, we had gone through the uh, extrinsic calibration of the laser range finder. So in the case of the, the laser range finder, there is a, you know, the six degree of freedom uh, motions, possible possibility of motions are there in the case of laser range finder from the base where the chances of errors may be there. So these chances of errors are generally the hidden errors which are not visible. So before implementing any of the sensor, on autonomous car, autonomous robot, flying robot, there is a need of uh, the calibration of the sensor. So the uh, the calibration can be done into the different method. Sometimes the targetless calibration is also seen in the literature. Sometime with target uh, uh, calibration can also be done. There are more than 10, 15 different methods of calibrations are there. We use calibrated without using the any mechanism. So we have used only the uh, one screen in front of the laser sensor and mathematical notations are made uh, used to find out the uh, rotational as well as the linear parameter of the sensor. So we did the experiment on the robot for the different environment. 
and finally uh, you know the improved results has been found in the case of uh, recalibration of the robot so dear participants so you are welcome for the discussion if you have any question you are welcome thank you thank you very much sir uh, if uh, may, I, may i would like to thank you for having this brief introduction about this it is a very important and the new science which very few people are aware of that yes so as, uh, yeah because in hospitals and in domestic yeah. purposes it can be certainly very useful and uh, i hope that in at international level um, yeah. we must be doing the sur surgery and all with the help of the trained robots yes. Yeah. In future, the autonomous guided vehicles are there, even in industry, even in the in the normal environment. The Google car, the autonomous cars are there. The first part of that car is to implement the sensor. The second important part is to calibration of the sensor. If you are not uh, calibrating the sensor and running the car over the road, the the accident is sure, because okay. the sensor will give you the different information. The car will move on a different platform, so there will be a confusion in the sensing of the actual object. So that's why the calibration is very, very, very important segment, and the precision measurement, which is a part of a metrology, is also going to be an emerging area in the field of. Yes, true, true, very true. Santoshi, you are here. Astoshi, that. Uh... He is uh, can I yes, all the participants. I would uh, like to request all the participants to kindly switch on their videos. And if you want to raise or you want to ask any question, any doubt, you are most welcome. You can speak. Santoji, please make all the participants the uh, these uh, the, um, the participants. Okay, sir. Please. Okay, sir. please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, now, Dixit, sir, please, you are saying something. I'm sorry. Uh, please, sir. Uh, so he has given the very good lecture. I think there is an Indian Institute of Legal Metrology. There also he may be invited to give a lecture, even online also, on particularly on the load cell where the maximum uses are there. And uh, he may give about the robotic technology uh, also because that uh, in future that things may be used in India also at different, different uh, uh, services. And uh, some vehicle tanks are there. Uh, they are the how the best sensors can be used. Uh, are in petrol pumps, uh, how the best uh, sensors may be used. Uh, you may discuss with him also. Uh, another thing is that, uh, that uh, in India, we do not produce the strain gauges and electromagnetic uh, transducers. So, in those areas also, the RSS may have the collaboration with this university and uh, then uh, the, we can do some of the things uh, for the benefit of our country and as well as of industries uh, these are only my few suggestions uh, now yeah. it is up to you uh, because we are in the ministry as well as in the rss yeah you can utilize his services and uh, another thing is that uh, we have to frame the rules on the load cell also uh, so yeah. you can uh, put him into the committees has where he can provide help to the ministries while framing the, the rules on the uh, load sales. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Nangla, Dr. Nangla. Thank you, Astosi. Thank you, all the participants. I think this was the very good sessions. And we went to some uh, new things uh, apart from general things. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, sir. This is certainly very good. In actually, a new exercise in which we have to work a lot because the yeah. tutor, uh, tomorrow is basically depending upon the artificial intelligence 
and how the things are moving as most of the people are using now chat gpt and other things so uh, and uh, you know the technology is very advanced even now we by the with the help of the scanning of the eyes uh, the google has developed some ai through which he, they can find what are the problems in the body where is the how much is the heart is working and how much are the kidneys are old so all these things are developing very fast and uh, these new technologies can certainly help us certainly sir yeah, scanners, uh, scanners has been developed uh, but with the help of this uh, uh, automatic devices a uh, lot of things may be done uh, so i hope that the sessions said it goes to you that you have selected this very topic and this will be very good and beneficial to the country thank, thank you. you thank you sir sir uh, professor nangala i think we can do some exercise with you uh, what we can do we can because at uh, we are having the industries with us and uh, the senior participants senior legal metallurgy like uh, uh, mr jena is there who was the joint controller in kannat in Cal uh, west bengal so there are many other part uh, participants with uh, and the industry people are there uh, laboratories any anyway, laboratories people are there so with the help of all we can do some exercise with you we can think how we can help the industry or how we can do something better for the society so certainly i will come back to you even at rss we are also doing the internship program for the engineers third year fourth year students so that you know in that way some new exercises can be involved with the help of the industry it will be a very good exercise uh, there is one scope that in the for the near future there is a need of the artificial intelligence tools so in our calibration we use the checkerboard we use the mechanical type of the calibration but if you are using the artificial intelligence tool then i think it will be a, the one of the topic which is not available to us all of the artificial intelligence in automatic okay. calibration of the yeah, sensor can yeah, yeah, and the other things in the report so going to be taking it in the compass let's keep it at art and the switch off your mics if you are not speaking if anybody want to speak something santosh ji have you taken the pictures let us only take the pictures न्यू टॉपिक थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू